Hey kids, so if you didn't notice, there's a bit of a change in scenery, some change in costuming and casting. I am in fact home, home. I say that because I don't fucking belong anywhere, but this is familiar. So why am I here? Well, working 12 hours a day, seven days a week, sitting in a room full of strangers isn't all it's cracked up to be. So I've been stressed and along with the stress going on in this fucking shit storm of a house, I've uh, kind of crumbled and so I'm on leave. I'm actually still an employee, uh, but I'm not getting paid. The management and my supervisor were very understanding of my current situation, very understanding that my mother-in-law is very ill and quickly deteriorating, very understanding. I don't think they would have been understanding of the reality that it's just fucking overwhelming working in a corporate atmosphere. I just don't, I don't belong there. And I think that is really the crux of the issue. I wasn't entirely okay with the work that I was doing before where it was 10 hours a day, seven days a week but it is a lot more manageable. And I think if I had been doing the same work for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, that it would still be manageable. But I'm in this room with these people and as nice as they are, they're entirely unrelatable and draining and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was easier when I was working for my hotel room, I was by myself, that was easy. But being plunged into the situation that is entirely uncomfortable for me was, was jarring and something that was unsustainable for me. It wasn't even necessarily that I was, you know, looking out for my mental health because I had already, I had already imploded by the time I decided to come back home. Um, if I had been able to keep myself from collapsing in on myself, I think I would still be there. I would be miserable, but I would still be there because I wasn't, I mean, if I'm not being entirely overwhelmed, then money is more important than my well-being. But I was to the point where I wasn't getting my job done. I didn't want to get... Um, I didn't want to get in trouble at work for not doing my job well, and so um, I decided to come back. Not only was I unable to maintain myself just mentally, I was also unable to maintain the facade. And the facade is kind of the most important part. Um, so I'll I'll try to give you guys uh, a better idea of what was going on as far as my work situation. They had us on slave hours. They were literally slave hours, which is, I mean, it was something that I signed up for, but I, I thought, I guess I, I overestimated my ability. And I was working last year, six days a week, 10 hours a day, and thought, you know, that extra day doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, especially because I'm not doing anything. But I was quickly promoted, and with the promotion I was working 12 hours, 7 days, and I wasn't by myself anymore. That makes a very big difference in my ability to work and maintain all of this. And so, it just, just didn't work didn't work. And if I go back 
I won't be doing what I was doing before. I just, I know I can't do it. I know. Um, I'm just not a corporate person. And I don't like the atmosphere. Um, I mean, in the way that people look at me, um, the piercings and... I didn't have this hair back then, but my hair has always been like in a mohawk, so... Uh, it's not considered professional necessarily and my supervisor didn't like it and um, in his roundabout really weird way he tried to let me know that and um, it kind of came off to me as just people in the office didn't like the way that I looked uh, and so that's not necessarily a big issue for me but it just adds to the feeling of not belonging there. Like the, it just, I guess, cements my resolve, my, uh, the, the knowledge that this is just not the place for me. But it's also the, I don't know, the climbing the corporate ladder kind of thing. There's a, there's a definite, it's almost like a miasma of just overachievement there and I'm sick of that I mean I've, I've been through all of it through school and I reached a point in school where you know people notice that you do really well and they keep piling things on you without even asking if you're okay and they just keep you know heightening the expectations the standards and eventually you just implode. At least for me. I um, hit critical mass in junior year and I just stopped caring. I fell asleep every day in class because I wasn't sleeping when I went to bed at home. I uh, failed several classes and I had like a 4.1 GPA and it dropped to a 3 which is I know is still pretty good for uh, a lot of people but it was devastating for me um, because a lot of how I measure my self, my self worth is on my accomplishments and it's this weird counterintuitive thing where I feel like when I get noticed and the expectations rise I'm going to eventually burn out. I already know. And so everyone there was very positive. My, my supervisor was incredibly supportive. But it is terrifying to hear that I've been noticed by management. That is, I mean, it's not even terrifying, it's just, that's not what I want. I want to stay under the radar. Uh, I want to do well, of course, everyone wants to do well, because I want to get money, I don't want to be, you know, let go because I'm not doing well, but I don't like not having control over my progress and when management takes a notice of you they put you in situations where you have more responsibilities and of course it's more money but at what cost so that is why I'm back here because I'm a fucking burnout And things here aren't good. I mean, you know, they've never been good. But they're a lot worse than they, they were before. But, uh, yeah. That's what's going on. I'll talk to y'all later.